everyone thought Steve here at the remix with Team 624 Kryptonite. What an amazing small robot with an amazing intake and vision system and shooter. Kryptonite with an amazing resume this past season. Finalists at Katy, winners at San Antonio and the Apollo Division at District Championships, as well as finalists in the Curry Division and at the TRI offseason. But what a great resume that they have so far. Really excited to get down into their amazing, small, compact robot here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Jacob, let's start off with you. Talk to me about your intake. It's so small, it's, it seems like the size of the notes. Talk to me about it. Okay, so originally at our first competition, Katie, we had an uh, over-the-bumper intake. It was made out of uh, eighth-inch aluminum, but uh, it was very uh, vulnerable to uh, collisions. So after our first competition, we switched to an under-the-bumper, and it's driven by two Neo V1.1s. And uh, we start off with, on the bottom, we have Vex Flex Wheels and uh, Andy Mark Sushi Rollers right here. And uh, it's uh, belt-driven, so uh, uh, the two motors, uh, each side of the intake, have belts uh, leading to them, and we use uh, sushi rollers and Vex Versa rollers for the main intake. And uh, we use uh, a quarter inch aluminum that is uh, bolted as an ex extension to our main drivetrain. And for our drivetrain, we use um, uh, SDS uh, Mark IV eyes with uh, Krakens and uh, magnetic encoders by CTRE. And uh, our main drivetrain is a 20 by 20 drivetrain. And then uh, the intake is a five inch extension, making our um, uh, frame perimeter without bumpers 20 by 25. That's really impressive to be able to keep everything into a small package. How hard was it to keep everything in such a small package? So uh, one of the de main design constraints is uh, we had to find a place to put all of the electronics, like the battery and the Robo Rio and everything. So one of the main uh, things we had to do is uh, to improve our center of mass and to keep the weight down low, we had to put the battery underneath the robot. So we put a cage for our battery on the bottom of our robot and basically encapsulates the robot and it locks shut. So it keeps the battery secure and it, it works very great. Uh, we're gonna pass it over to Liam. Talk to me about your shooter that you that you have. It seems pretty robust. It seems turreted uh, or I guess angled. Talk to me about it. Yeah. So when constructing our shooter, we had two main objectives with it. That was one, what you already mentioned, it being robust. We knew that it would be a collision-filled season. We were a small frame perimeter by aimed at trying to go, to go for those quick cycles, right? So that led us into developing a rack and pinion. So we have two steel pinions on either side of the shooter plates, which each shooter plate is independent and the rack is integrated with that exact same cut of quarter inch aluminum. Uh, this made it so that we had virtually no issues during uh, the season with uh, our shooter. And then moving up to our throat, which actually intakes the note from the intake, we have uh, just a general any angle throat that is able to intake the note at whatever angle the shooter may be at for easy front play. And finally, moving up front, the actual shooter, we have two independent sides for the wheels. And this is able to help us induce spin so we can be more accurate at longer ranges, as well as just, yeah, just consistency, right? What's the percentage difference between both of the sides? There's, a, there's around 15-20% uh, difference depending on how far we are away from the speaker we are between the two sides of the wheel, just to ensure that our shots are going straight in rather than flipping over. Exactly. Now, can we see that process of an, the note going through? Great. <laughs> now, another thing I want to ask is about your amp mechanism over here. Yes. Seems like that's also on a racket pinion. 
Yeah, so we had the difficulty, as you already mentioned, with having such a small frame perimeter, right? So the total amount of space for the entire amp system was around one inch to drive it and for it to actually move along the pinion. So that's why we chose rack and pinion. I mean, it's slim, it's something easy, and it's something pretty robust. And this has allowed us to pretty much make a deflector out of it, like you've seen many teams during this season, which has been very helpful and I'd say quite, quite great. So Nolan, talk to me about your climber. It seems like you guys have two, uh, your hooks are double-sided, but also talk right. to me about the mechanism down below. Uh, so because of the battery box, we had very limited space for the, the motor for our climb. So to for this, we use uh, on either side, two 90 degree motors uh, driven by a chain and a spool that drives it up and down. Uh, and when you come up here, you can see we have about, we have the frame perimeter to work with on either side when you get up to the, the shooter angle. So down here and all through up here, we use 3D printed and aluminum manufactured uh, blocks that hold constant force springs. That's how the, the climb goes up, the string's pulling it down. So whenever you let the spool unravel, the constant force springs just push it up. Uh, and then when you come up to the hook, we, we designed a double-sided hook so that we could climb on either side. How often do you guys use the other sides or do you guys use one side more often than the other? Uh, actually very often because sometimes during the match, we'll, we'll put one arm on one side of the chain and the other on the other side. It's not purposeful, but it works out. And it seems like you guys are able to individually control each yes. arm, they're not together? No, it's individual. So that whenever we climb on one side, like further, like the left, the left side of the climb can go up higher. What an amazing climb that you guys have. Love that it's individual. And how does that affect the drivers? Are the drivers uh, pretty well with that? Yeah. How, it, do, how the are they? The first competition was a little bit harder because uh, the bot got out late. Uh, manufacturing, so we didn't get much practice. So uh, after the first competition, it was a lot smoother. Uh, just practicing, pulling it up, down, same time. It, right. it was a lot. It was a lot easier. Now, one thing that puts everything together is the code. Eli, talk to me about the software that you guys have. Bunch of cameras, and one thing that Kryptonite is really known for is their vision and their Auton system. Talk to me about it. I saw a, a small computer on there. Talk to me about your entire system you guys have. Right, so this year we're only using Java on our robot for on the robot rail. Um, and then we're running Photon Vision on our coprocessor, which is an orange pie. We also have a limelight at the back, and I'll explain what those do in a second. Uh, another thing that we decided to try new this year is Advantage Kit and Advantage Scope by uh, 6328 Mechanical Advantage. Uh, so here you can see, actually opened the wrong log, but uh, it'll let us view all of our, all of the, everything that went in and out of our bot, all the information, uh, view all of that in a really nice visual way using using Advantage Scope. That's helped a lot when we're debugging mechanical problems, programming problems, anything. We can see exactly what happened to the bot during the match. Another thing that we're do, that we're continuing this year is we're using a custom path editor uh, for our autonomous system. I just opened our autons for this year. So we have quite a few different paths. Some of these we use, some of these we don't. Our main one is Amp Rush here. And we have all of the paths that the robot will take during auto all set out here. It makes it really easy to edit. And uh, being custom, it's uh, it lets us modify the path editor to our needs. So you can see we have a few settings. It's really easy to add extra settings for each path if we need to. And yeah, uh, that's all read by the RoboRio, the code on the RoboRio, and uh, we write our autonomous scripts using the WPI lib command system. And what software did you guys use to create your custom uh, path planner? So this is actually running on an, an Electron app because it was originally a website running on the robot. We decided to change okay. that to running locally here. Uh, and that just was the easiest system we could use to transfer it to be a desktop app. Uh, it's running using uh, uh, React. So this is all a React interface uh, and JavaScript. Now, with your cameras, how many cameras do you guys have? I see the limelight. I see two cameras over here. Am I missing any? No. So we have three robot. We have three cameras on the robot. Uh, the first one is the, uh, actually mounted to the shooter. It moves with the shooter. Uh, that's what we use for aligning the speaker. So as we're as we're coming up, we'll I'll, I'll have the prime button. It'll immediately turn the robot. We call it quick turn. Um, we're coming in. I press the button. And it'll quick turn to where it thinks the shooter is or the speaker is, um, just based off of odometry. 
And then from there, once it sees it, it'll lock on to the Abort tag, and it'll actually get the distance that the robot is away using the Abort tag pose estimation. Uh, and the system we use to actually find which angle we need to go at is kind of interesting. Um, it's really simple. So uh, I see a lot of teams doing like physics calculations. We decided at the beginning of the season, just try something really simple, which is take the distance and multiply it by a constant number. And we found that that was actually working really well. So <laughs> we decided to stick with it. Um, so yeah, uh, we just have a number in the code that we are able to use. If we're shooting too high, it's really easy to modify it down. Yeah, that's basically it. And what about these two cameras? I'm assuming this the right. limelight is used for uh, node detection? Correct. So we have node detection. We mainly use this during autonomous to correct any inaccuracies or any bumps that may have happened in auto. So we still pick up every note that uh, we go for. And uh, we also have this one. So one of the issues we found after our first competition was that uh, when we're scoring an amp, it can, we can somehow, sometimes have a difficult time seeing the import tag on the amp to auto align to it. So we added this one, this camera back here, which is always facing at an angle where it'll see the April tag on the amp. So that's that's the really the main use of this one. And uh, when we did have a, I mean, I'll just leave that part out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah. Well, uh, well, 624, thank you guys so much for taking the time to walk us through your amazing robot. Again, great resume that you guys have this season. Love to see you guys every year as well. Again, great programming, great robot as always. Really excited to see what you guys do in 2025. So good luck to you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.